In this portion of the lecture on RNA and gene structure, we're going to be discussing the structure of a protein coding gene, what some of the names of the different regions inside the gene are, what those regions do uh, during gene expression, and we're going to be able to label all the parts of these protein coding genes. So in order to kind of understand gene structure, first we have to talk about what a gene is. So the definition of a gene is a nucleotide sequence in the DNA that codes for one or more functional products. And those functional products many times um, are proteins. And so these are nucleotide sequences in the DNA that code for some type of protein. And so there <laughs> on the bottom, you can see the structure in the DNA of a protein coding gene. You can see that there's those two strands, double-stranded DNA, and there are several different regions or areas within this protein coding gene that have kind of different functions. And so the most important region of a protein coding gene is this region here called the coding region. And the coding region runs from here to here between these two lines. And what the coding region is, is it's the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA that specifies which amino acids are going to go into your protein. So this is the sequence that determines the protein sequence. <laughs> it always begins with the same three nucleotides, ATG in the DNA or AUG when it's transcribed to mRNA. This three nucleotides is referred to as a start codon because it's the start of translation or um, protein synthesis. And then the coding region always ends with three nucleotides that encode a stop codon. So you have kind of a start sequence of the protein and an end or stop sequence. And that start and stop codon basically mark the beginning and the end of the coding region or the region that's going to ultimately code for your protein. And so what you'll see is that on either side of the coding region, whether we're talking about upstream uh, or before the coding region or downstream after it, <laughs> there are several other sequences as well. And so if we focus on the upstream portion of a protein coding gene or the portion before that coding region, we first come to the promoter of the gene. And the promoter is the sequence in the DNA that acts as a binding site for this enzyme called RNA polymerase. And RNA polymerase is the enzyme that performs transcription or will take this DNA and transcribe it into an mRNA. There has to be an area on the DNA that attracts RNA polymerase and allows it to sort of bind onto the DNA so that this gene can be transcribed. And that's what the promoter region does. The promoter sequence itself is not transcribed, it doesn't get made into RNA, and nor does it get translated into protein. It just is a binding site for this particular enzyme. <laughs> if we move a little bit downstream or closer to the coding region, after the promoter, there's a sequence between the promoter and before the coding region called the leader sequence. And this leader sequence is transcribed or made into RNA, but it's never translated. <laughs> this sequence you will see in an mRNA, and it becomes what we refer to as the five prime UTR, or the five prime untranslated region, UTR. And so it tells you right in the name that this sequence will never be made into protein, but it does allow recognition of the mRNA during translation and it allows the ribosomal place to bind. So that leader region is important as well. And then we reach the coding region here. And if we look downstream on the other side or after the coding region, we come to a trailer sequence. The trailer comes immediately after the stop codon in a coding region of the gene. And it prepares the enzyme that does transcription, RNA polymerase, to be released. It is transcribed into RNA, but it is also never translated into protein. 
And so it becomes what we refer to as the three prime UTR or the three prime untranslated region in an mRNA. <laughs> and then finally, this region here, the terminator downstream of your coding region um, or after it is the sequence in the DNA that signals RNA polymerase. It's time to stop transcribing, time to stop making this RNA. It's officially done and it allows to, the enzyme to dissociate or be removed from the DNA. The terminator is not transcribed or translated into protein. It's just like the opposite of the promoter region. So the promoter region allows RNA polymerase to bind. It's not made into RNA or protein. And the terminator region allows RNA polymerase to unbind. It is also not made into RNA or protein. And so what you can see here is in the at the DNA level, we have the promoter, the leader, the coding region, the trailer, and then the terminator in our protein coding gene. If we were to transcribe or turn this DNA into RNA, we would have the enzyme that does transcription binding on the promoter and starting transcription right here at this transcription start. Transcription would proceed all the way through <coughs> the leader, the coding region, and the trailer, and then ultimately it would end at this terminator point. And you can actually see that reflected down here in the size of this mRNA that was transcribed. We now no longer see the promoter area. We've shortened this sequence. We no longer see the terminator area, but we do have that leader sequence, which has become the 5' prime UTR in this mRNA. And we have the trailer, which has become the 3' prime UTR. You can see that start sequence here, marking the beginning of the coding region, and there's that stop sequence here marking the end. And so this would be the mRNA transcript that's made via transcription from this protein coding gene. And so inside of, a, <coughs> of the coding region of a protein coding gene, there are two kind of different types of sequences. There are exons and there are introns. And they both exist inside the coding region, or the part that will ultimately become the amino acids in the protein. And so what you can see here is we have in the DNA level three exons and two introns. And after transcription takes place, we still have in the RNA level three exons and then two introns. But as that mRNA matures into something that will ultimately become the protein, we now only have three exons. We've removed those introns from the sequence here. And that's because exons are the sequences in the DNA that will ultimately end up in our RNA and become translated into protein. Exons will exit the nucleus and become translated. Introns, however, are sequences that will be removed from the final mRNA before it's translated into protein. Introns stay inside the nucleus. They are synthesized in this pre-RNA and then they are cut out. So they are never translated into protein. So it's your exons that will become the protein via translation. They exit the nucleus. Introns stay in the nucleus. They're removed and they're never translated. <laughs> And when we're talking about exons and introns, even though we remove these introns from the final kind of uh, gene product, they stay in the same order. So exon 1, 2, and 3, even after removal of introns 1 and 2, stay in the same order. 1, 2, and 3. And so here's kind of a full summary of what happens to your protein coding gene, especially all of the different regions uh, through transcription and then translation. So at the DNA level, you've got your promoter, you've got your coding sequence in orange, and then you've got your terminator here in red, right? The leader sequence is right here after the promoter. The trailer sequence is here <laughs> right before the terminator. As transcription takes place, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, but it doesn't transcribe it. So you create a piece of RNA that starts with the leader region 
includes the coding region, which now has your exons and introns in it, and includes the trailer region, but does not include that terminator. And then after RNA is processed, those introns stay in the nucleus, exons will exit as the final protein coding sequence. <laughs> the leader becomes the 5' UTR, or the 5' untranslated region. The trailer sequence becomes the 3' UTR. And now this fully mature RNA can be moved to the ribosome for translation.